Luke, the, uh, arguably the most fundamental question we can ask uh, is one that has uh, troubled me much of my life. And that is, why is there anything at all? Uh, not just how the universe, why is there a universe, or why is there God, or why there's morality, why there's uh, numbers, why, why is there anything? Um, and so you, you have a perspective from various, you're, you're a cosmologist, you believe in God, uh, you have focused on fine tuning. Um, none of those, we all know, answer the question. However, from that perspective, how do you view the question? So the first thing is, I, I don't see any resources within physics to attack that question. So when you boil it down, all physical theories basically say, you know, these things exist, they have these properties, they started off in this particular way, and we start from there and we try to explain uh, the way the world is. But if you're starting there, you're assuming that things exist, and so you, you, you don't really touch that problem at all you shouldn't then try to reinterpret the problem to reinterpret the word nothing to try and get away with yeah. with with getting something that looks like a physical answer you really you have to set that problem aside so either if you're a naturalist it just doesn't have an answer at all but for me uh, I think one of the things that draws me towards a you know, the, the classical ideas about God is that it, it seems like it would be the sort of thing that would answer this question that uh, uh, if there is something that exists via some sort of necessity in some way that as cosmologists I don't fully understand but I, you know, I try to wrap my head around it seems better than no answer at all to say if the something existed necessarily then existence is the sort of thing we would expect rather than being a complete surprise. And that it seems to tie things off in a bit more of a, a bow. Okay, let's look at both, at both ends of that. So, uh, as you know, some physicists have said that you can get something from nothing through quantum tunneling, uh, yeah. through there being absolutely nothing in the sense that there's no, not just no matter and no forces, there's not even space and time. Right. And that you can get through an understanding of quantum physics and, and quantum mechanics some sort of a, of a, a spontaneous emergence, even if... Uh, uh, even if, if, if the rarity is, is beyond our belief, there's enough, <laughs> even if there's no time, it, it yeah. can happen. So your reaction to that, first of all? I think it's missing the point of the question. I think there's always, it, it, there's always something there. Even if it's not the usual things we think about, it's not matter or energy or even space and time, there's still something capable of producing the entirety of physical reality, which I think deserves the name something, right? <laughs> there's, there's something there. So I, I think it's, it's still avoiding the problem if you, if, if you... So the, the way to understand it is why is there anything at all that exists? It could have been the case that nothing existed. If you really think about it in those sort of terms, then any explanation in terms of maybe there was this quantum thing that wasn't very much stuff but still yeah. made everything, is, is sort of missing the point of the thing, of the problem. There's, there's all the things that could exist and then some of these actually exist and the question is why does anything, why do any of these things exist? Whether they're as something as ordinary as a cicada or whether yeah. there's something as esoteric as a quantum whatever that produces a universe, this why does anything at all exist is still something that needs to be attacked in very different terms. Okay, let's look at the other side now. Uh, you're saying that, that th th therefore everything we have is contingent, so you need something of necessity, and God in the traditional definition is, 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 uh, is a necessity, the, his ex existence is part of the essence and all that. Uh, but why pick God as, as a necessary existence? Couldn't you have the laws of physics having the same type of, of necessary existence or, or some other factor that generated the laws of physics. In other words, you're requiring a necessity. Uh, why have, have God be that? Well, there's a couple of ways to approach that. Uh, one is to say that we, we understand what sort of laws of physics are and they seem to have this contingent character that they could have been otherwise. I can, as a, as a theoretical physicist, I can write down, I can cover blackboards with equations of, you know, laws that, that could have been the case, and none of them scream, you know, I have to exist, you, must, you know, the reality must obey me. So it seems like laws and physical things just aren't the right category of thing. So if we're looking for a necessary being, it must be something else. Now that doesn't immediately point you towards God necessarily, 
But that's at least a, a start, a step along that road. If you then throw in, say, fine tuning, it's, it's crucial to fine tuning pointing to God that there's some sort of reason why God would want to create this universe, that, that it does the sort of moral properties, the good, it creates good creatures and those sorts of things. So if you have a good God, then you've got the start of an explanation there as well. So if you're putting those things together, you, you're starting to get more of a picture like the theistic picture. But that's not really the way I approach this thing. It's not that I start from these scattered facts and try to build up a picture of God. It's more that it's, it's a worldview and then I can make sense of the, the various sort of facts about the universe I see better than, than other worldviews.